بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو ٹیکنیکل ایکسپلین ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی ڈیزائن اے مائکرو اسٹرپ پیچ اینٹینا فار 5G اپلیکیشنز ان دس ویڈیو وی ار گوئنگ ٹو ڈیزائن اے مائکرو اسٹرپ پیچ اینٹینا ایٹ 2.4 گیگا ہرٹز اینڈ ایٹ 2.4 2.4 گیگا ہرٹز دس مائکرو اسٹرپ پیچ اینٹینا کین بی یوز فار وائی فائی بلوٹوتھ اینڈ ادر وائرلیس اپلیکیشنز اینڈ دا پیرامیٹرز ار دا ڈائمنشنز اف مائی ڈیزائن ار دی فالوئنگ The width of substrate will be denoted by W and that will be 65 mm. Similarly, the length of substrate will also be 65 mm. The height of substrate denoted by H will be 1.6 mm and we are going to use the FR4 substrate. The width of page will be 36 mm. Similarly, the length of page will be 28.68 mm. The height of the ground or the page will be 0.035 mm and the width of feed line will be 1.44 mm so let us go to cst microwave studio and let us start our design so i have opened up my cst microwave studio and i'm going to click on new template after clicking on new template Uh, I am going to click on microwave and radio frequency and optical and in the sub region I am going to click on antennas and then I am going to click on planar plot slot etc. We will do our simulation in time domain and to select the frequency range let, let us select the frequency range from 1 to 3 gigahertz and I want, I want the electric field, uh, magnetic field and the far field monitor at 2.4 gigahertz so i'm going to click on next and then i'm good to go so now my cst environment is open again first thing that i want to do is to add parameters into my uh, into my cst studio so the first parameter again will be denoted by w and that will be my I can give it the value of 65 and that will be my width of the substrate again length of substrate is again 65 so I will quickly define the parameters uh, height of the substrate will be 1.6 millimeter similarly the uh, width of page will be uh, 36 millimeter and the length of page will be 28.68 mm similarly the width of feed line will be 1.44 mm uh, and the height of ground will be or the thickness of ground will be 0.035 mm so I can define it if I want to but I don't need to fine So now we have defined parameters now let us start the design so I'm going to click on modeling and I'm going to click on the break design then I'm going to click escape key, escape key and now I'm going to name it so I will name it as the ground so let us first design the ground again x minimum will be the width of ground which will be minus w by 2 to w by 2 W by 2 so that the width of ground is W again on Y axis I have the length of ground which is simply minus L by 2 to L by 2 because the total ground length is L and then I want the ground to be uh, downward beneath the Z axis so I'm going to define it as minus Z. so if I have 0 at Z axis ground is defined beneath it and then I am going to load material load from material library and search from copper and here we have we have copper we are, I am going to click on load and now let me see the preview we are good enough to go I am going to press off fine let me have the front view again I am going to click on break press escape key and now I am going to design a substrate again the, the dimensions of the substrate are equal to the dimensions of the ground because we do not have a defected ground structure fine 
and this is 11 by 2 now because we are defining the substrate so the substrate height is n again uh, we want to load materials from the library and I am going to select a substrate which is FR4 loading so I am going to load it you can see its specification here uh, epsilon is 4.3 and the loss tangent is 0 0.025 so I am going to load this material you can see in the preview we are good enough to go I am going to press ok now I need to define the page again I am going to click on break press the escape key name my material uh, which is page and now I am going to define the dimensions of the page which is minus w, wp divided by 2 and 2 wp divided by 2 so this is my width of page which is wp and the length of page is minus lp divided by 2 into lp divided by 2 so I want the uh, uh, total length of page to be lp for that I need to give the dimension of minus lp divided by 2 to lp divided by 2 again we want the page to be on the top of substrate so page should be on the top of s so it should be at h height and then the height of this page will be equal to the height of ground which is h plus d again I am going to click on copper you can see the preview we are good enough to go. now I have designed the uh, substrate I have designed the ground and I have designed the page if you can have a look I have designed the ground I have designed the page as well now the other thing left is my feed line so what I am going to do is that I am going to zoom it but not that much I am going to zoom it a bit and then in the pick points I am going to in the pick points I am going to select the middle point so here we go we have the pick edge center and I am going to double click here and then what I am going to do is to align the uh, working coordinate system or the local coordinate system with this point now we have local coordinate system aligned with this point now I can define the feed line before defining the feed line I need to make sure that my feed line is of 50 ohm to be connected to, to the connector so for that I need to go to the macros and I need to click on calculate and from calculate I need to click on calculate analytical line impedance by default the coaxial cable will appear so you need to uh, click on it and select step 9 here we have the epsilon value which is 4.3 for the uh, FR4 substrate here we will define our uh, uh, frequency and now what we are going to do is we are going to calculate it now we have 38.61 gigahertz so I'm, this is W is my weight of the feed line I have found it that if I give it 1.444 this feed line is almost 50 ohm so that's why my 1.44 value is my best so that's why I have defined the weight of feed line uh, to be 1.444 if you can have a look here so now we need to design the feed line so what I'm going to do in the modeling I'm going to select a brick then I'm going to press the escape key I'm going to define it as a feed line my u axis is this thing which should be the bit of feed line this should be minus wf by 2 to wf by 2 and then I have the length of feed line which stands from 0 and this needs to extend till the page and I have calculated this distance how I have calculated this distance I am going to tell you in a, a moment I have calculated this distance by I can have a look because my page is at the center so from the center half of the page is downward and half word is upward and we know the total length of my this a uh, total width of uh, total length of my this page is 28.68 so the half of 28.68 is something 14 point something so this page is 14 point something downward so I have subtract, subtracted that 14 point something from the half of this page that is going to give me the length of the feed line which is 18.16 and then I have this uh, uh, I have this height of this because this is on the top of substrate so this should be equal to the height of page and the copper is also right so you can have in the preview 
you can have a look this extends from here and it connect to the page so i'm good enough to go i'm going to press ok and then i'm going to get rid of the local coordinate system by pressing this so now we have everything designed all we need to do is add this feed line to the to the to this page so i'm going to come in the components and this is my feed line and this is my page so i'm going to click on feed line and in the board again i'm going to select add and i'm going to add it to the page now if you can have a look our page and the feed line has been added together now our antenna is ready we have the substrate the ground everything in perfect place the next step we need to do is to uh, uh, feed it for feeding i need to use again the waveguide port for that i need to just rotate it and select the base of my feed line I need to zoom it till I can select the base of my feed line. There we go. This is my base of feed line. I'm going to click on pick and I'm going to pick this feed line face. After picking this feed line face, I'm going to uh, click on simulation and click on waveguide port. And in there, in the X minimum, I should define the range as T star width of feed line and T star bit of feed line x axis and from z i need to define it as h plus z and this will be four times the height of the feed so i will give it this video and we are good to go again so now everything is ready our patch antenna is ready and now what i am going to do is that uh, i have already selected the frequency band and i have already selected the far field region so i am going to start the simulation so here we go we have the setup, setup solver here and I am going to start the simulation over here and in the 1D results first of all the most important is the S parameter so I am going to click on S11 and this is my S11 parameter as you can have a look the antenna is resonating at almost 2.4 gigahertz actually 2.39 gigahertz but that's almost 2.4 gigahertz so this antenna is resonating at 2.4 gigahertz and now what is the bandwidth of antenna the bandwidth of antenna is again the range of frequency for which this return loss is less than minus 10 db and this is my minus 10 db uh, so let me right click here and let me uh, choose the add curve marker fine when I uh, choose the add curve marker, I need to double click here. So this is my first point. You can have a look. This is minus 2.3538 and this is at minus 9.82 dB, which is almost minus 10 dB. And then again, I can change the, I can select next point, which is, which is number 2, which is again at minus 10 dB. So we can simply to find bandwidth we can simply subtract 2.24256 minus 2.3538 db and that is going to add me the db so this is how we add this axis marker by right clicking on it and by selecting add curve marker the other thing is that you can also annotate here for example i have this option of annotation here uh, add annotation here here I can type the text. For example, I can say bandwidth is uh, 2.4256 minus 2.3538. And then I can place the, uh, I can place this annotation wherever I want. This is just to understand these results. So the bandwidth is 2.4526 minus this. This is the normal bandwidth. If you find, if you want to find the fractal bandwidth, it has its own formula, which is in terms of percentage. So the other important thing is, let me again uh, come here. We have the VSWR over here. Again, the range of frequencies for which the return loss was minus Y is less than minus 10 dB. For the same range the vswr will be less than 2 and the range of vswr is 1 to infinity so if you can have a look we have 1.5 here and then we have 2 here 
so if you can have a look for the same frequencies this is less than 2 so you can also find bandwidth by the range of frequencies for which this is less than minus 2 you can select a point here and you can select a point here at 2 greater than 2 then the return loss is uh, greater than minus 10 for example it's minus 5 or minus 4 etc so this was VSWR and now we will click on far field results in order to know about the gain and in order to know about the directivity so in far fields we have far field f is equal to 2.41 so i'm going to click on it as soon as i click on it let me drag this down so that it's more visible to you as soon as i click on it we have this type of structure appear and here and here a bit of details about this results are given Output is directivity frequency is 2.4 gigahertz. Directivity is 6.67 dBi. Again, dBi means with respect to isotopic antenna. And these are also uh, cover here. The red line is 6.68, which is the maximum directivity. And if you can have a look, we have this scale here. By default, this is in dB, but if I click on this, this is going to change to linear scale. We can have a look this has been changed to linear scale which is 4.65 and again this has also been changed to linear scale which is 4.653 so if you want to change it to linear scale you can if you don't you, you don't need to also you can change uh, whatever you want to see here it is given directivity but if i click on here i can get the i triple e gain fine gain will always be less than directivity which is very less than directivity it means that our radiation efficiency is very low i can also see the realized gain which is which will be further lower than the ieee gain which is 2.62 gain so from here you can uh, select whatever you want you can even select the electric field the uh, magnetic field the power pattern uh, and the directivity gain etc the other thing is that this was a 3d plot now uh, let me drag it back to my position okay so this was the uh, perspective view if you want to have the front view you can also see the front view so if you can have you can have a different view from here and the other thing is that with this was a 3d plot you can also have a 2d a cartesian or a polar plot and if you want to see the structure also that in which direction is the antenna radiating you can click on here by show structure when you click on here now the structure is not shown because the far field is is solid so if you also click on far field transparent you will see your structure here as you can have a look the patch is radiating in this direction that's why the directivity is maximum so now we have we can see the structure also if you want to make the structure transparent you can click on structure transparent and then you will not be able to see the structure uh, you will see a transparent structure have a look now the US structure is transparent we don't want to be transparent you can see it like this so this was the far field plot again you have to the 2d plot also you have the Cartesian plot which basically gives you uh, the directivity dbi with respect to the theta and then you have the polar plot again this also gives you directivity with respect to the degree plot but in polar form so this was all about the far field plot and the results if you like my video please subscribe to my channel technically explained